Well, Brian Koberger, the accused quadruple murderer of the four students at the University of Idaho, has finally come up with an alibi, but it's not a very good one. He does, however, have a cell phone expert, usually testifies for the prosecution, to say that his cell phone was pinging away from the murder house. So that could be a problem. Let's discuss. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, State Attorney for Palm Beach County, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman here on True Crime MTN. Appreciate all your likes and comments. Keep subscribing. We're well over 30,000 now and climbing. As far as this uh, case of national attention, the quadruple murder of the four Idaho, uh, University of Idaho students, allegedly by Brian Koberger, this PhD student in nearby Pullman, Washington, where he was a student at Washington State, and it looked like all the evidence was pointing at him. I mean, his DNA was found on the sheath of the knife at the crime scene. He matched a description by one of the witnesses there, although he's wearing a mask, they could still see his bushy eyebrows. And he owns a white Hyundai Elantra, which is the car that left the house, sped away, that is considered to be the car that uh, had the murderer in it. Well, he owns one of them. Hello, Hello I am Officer Loengus. Stops being audio and video recorded. I think, I, know, I think you know why I stopped you. You ran the red light. What actually happened was I was stuck in the middle of the intersection. Yeah, so I was, I was behind you the whole left. time. Yeah. Yeah. So technically, you're not supposed to enter the intersection at all for that reason, because if the light turns red, then you're stuck in the intersection, and then you're on the red light. So that's the reason I stopped you. Do you have your license on you? Yep. And when they caught him at his parents' house in Pennsylvania, they saw him putting his trash in a receptacle while he was wearing gloves. I mean, why do you do that? Who does that? So there's a bunch of evidence against the guy. And a big part of it is also the cell phone data. Now, for the first time, the defense lawyers have come up with an alibi. Even though you're supposed to provide an alibi within 10 days of the arraignment, if you're in Idaho... The judge allowed the defendant, as is the right of the judge, to have multiple extensions and to finally come out with it now. Now, to me, that's a little suspicious because if you have an alibi, you know where you were. You can say it right away. If you were at your mother's house, you can just say that. But he took a while to come up with the alibi. I think he was looking at the evidence against him and was trying to figure out what to say. And according to his defense lawyers, the alibi is just that he was... Stargazing. He was out alone driving. Not much of an alibi, right? And uh, he said, according to the pleadings, that Mr. Koberger was out driving in the early morning hours of November 13, 2022, as he often did to hike and run and or see the moon and stars. He drove throughout the area south of Pullman, Washington, west of Moscow, Idaho, including Wawa Park. So that wouldn't make much sense normally because who drives around between three and four in the morning the murders allegedly occurred around four in the morning who drives around uh, at that hour looking at stars especially when you're not driving a convertible you're driving a hard top hyundai and it's november so i mean it's cold (laughs) i don't know if it was snowing that night but you would think visibility wouldn't exactly be at its peak but okay that's their claim now As much as I would like to say that's bogus, uh, the defense does have a cell phone expert, someone who normally testifies for the prosecution, someone who has a good reputation. And that individual is saying that the cell phone data actually helps the defense. According to the pleading from Koberger's defense lawyer, Koberger's mobile device was south of Pullman, Washington and west of Moscow, Idaho on November 13th, 2022. At Brian Koberger's mobile device did not travel east on the Moscow Pullman Highway in the early morning hours of November 13th and thus could not be the vehicle captured on video along the Moscow Pullman Highway near Floyd's Cannabis Shop. So you have an expert witness now who is going to try to contradict the prosecution's claim that they have cell phone evidence that on the night of the murders, Koberger's phone was tracked leaving his house just before 3 a.m. before it went blank. Because if you're about to commit quadruple murder, allegedly, you turn your phone off, I guess. Or you leave it behind. But for whatever reason, 
The phone was turned off right after he left the house at 3 a.m. And a car matching Koberger's was seen on surveillance footage passing the house four times on the night of the murders. And it was seen speeding away about 15 minutes after the murders. And about 30 minutes later, the phone turned on again. It started pinging again on the highway from Moscow back to Pullman, where Koberger lived. So, now it could be a battle of experts. That's not good for the prosecution if it is a battle of experts, because the prosecution has the entire burden of proof to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Koberger was the murderer. And all you need is one juror, one juror out of 12, who has some reasonable doubt, and that is a hung jury. If you have all 12, it'll be an acquittal. That's not going to happen here. The evidence, to me, is really strong. DNA is very powerful, direct evidence. And then you have all this other stuff, the car, the cell phone data, which now could be in dispute. You have the image of Koberger, though, picking through his trash and uh, with gloves, trying to hide his DNA, his fingerprints and so forth from the trash. And the cops were out there pulling the trash. Uh, so it's it's uh, still a really strong case against Koberger, plus the fact that he's a PhD criminology student who seems to be fascinated with serial killers, and he matched the description from one of the witnesses there at the house. Although he was wearing a mask, they said it was someone matching Koberger's build, height, and so forth with bushy eyebrows, which Koberger has. So it seems like they've got some good evidence, and if they can show things like well, the Koberger was near the victim's house at least 12 times in the months preceding the murders. That's also powerful evidence. Why would he be casing the scene? Why would he be driving around there? He doesn't live near there. So if they could show surveillance footage that shows him driving around, well, that's pretty bad for Koberger. Now, the defense expert here, when they say on the night of the murders, the phone data shows that he was elsewhere, not in the vicinity of the murders, that could be a problem for prosecutors, but it still doesn't undercut the fact that apparently Koberger was near the victim's house at least 12 times in the months preceding the murders. So cell phone data in itself can be inexact, and it can go both ways. You can use it to undermine the prosecution's case and the defense expert. Uh, but just that one expert alone, I think, does not o overcome the overwhelming evidence that appears to be piling up against Koberger. But the one thing that is predictable about juries is that they are notoriously unpredictable. So stay tuned. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman here on True Crime MTN. If you like this video, please like it, comment. And I know you've got a lot of thoughts on this. I hear from Koberger supporters out there who think it's someone else who did it. And, you know, if you feel that way, Leave the comment. I enjoy responding to as many as I can. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.